Hi, and welcome to Christ Center Gamers unboxing and hopefully first impressions of, of well, whatever's in this box. So this is our first product to review from Corsair. I'm really excited about it. And I think I know what it is, but we'll let the box itself be our reveal. So let's see what we got. We have a packing slip. Let's not do that. And underneath that is bubbles. And then the item that I was expecting and hoping for. Here we go. The brand new has barely been out, um, not even a month. It's actually really new. Corsair HS70 Bluetooth. It's a multi platform gaming headset, it says. It's supposed to support Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and mobile. And it's got 3.5 millimeter USB and Bluetooth simultaneously. That is why I was excited about this product. Because very few headsets allow you to get simultaneous sources. I think that's really cool. So let's check this out. <clears throat> Alright, so pretty nice front of the box. Discord certified. IQ software. Um, looks sharp. Let's go ahead and go to the side. Never miss a beat. Okay. And over here is just another picture of the headset. And on the bottom and on the back is some... Let's see, it says... Bluetooth 24-bit 96 kilohertz USB and 3.5 millimeter connections. Simultaneously connect wireless Bluetooth audio and wired game audio. High quality custom tune 50 millimeter neodymium. Yeah, it's one of those words. Audio drivers, detachable noise canceling, unidirectional microphone, and up to 30 hours of battery life. That's actually really good. Uh, let's see technical specifications. It says here USB and 3.5 millimeter connectors. Bluetooth radio version is five. Good. Bluetooth profiles, HUDP, HFP, and HSP. Uh, signal range is 30 feet. Battery life is, like I said, 30 hours. It's fantastic. Headphone type is custom 50 millimeter neodymium. Frequency response is 20 to 20. Impedance is 32 ohms at 1 kilohertz. Sensitivity is 111 decibels plus or minus 3 decibels. That's pretty sensitive, so it should work on almost anything. Uh, microphone type is unidirectional. Impedance is 2, ki 2 kilo ohms. Frequency response 100 hertz to 10 kilohertz, which is pretty standard for a microphone. And sensitivity minus 40 dB, plus or minus 3. All right, on the bottom we've got our compatibility. Let's see here. Compatibility. Nintendo Switch, wireless Bluetooth compatible with Switch Online app on the phone, and then wired. Xbox Series X and Xbox One through the wired connector. Uh, PlayStation 4, 5, and 4 through the wired connector. PC. Wireless Bluetooth, wired 3.5 millimeter, USB A to USB C cable included for USB, which is really cool. Uh, mobile wireless Bluetooth, wired and USB adapter sold separately. So that's pretty neat. I really like how this headset is supposed to be compatible with almost everything. So I think that's great. And one of the reasons I was really excited to check it out. So let us open the box. That's the unboxing. Okay. Hopefully I won't need to cut the bottom open. I guess we'll find out. All right, here we are. So, slide it out so you guys can see it. It is packed like so. And we lost a manual. That's fine. Okay, so, box. Everything we need in the box has now fallen out. Here is our multi platform gaming headset manual. And in here, we have safety information. Is this a fold-out or just a sheet? That's a fold-out. So all kinds of safety information. And then we've got warranty guide, which is important if you'd like to get your stuff fixed. Hopefully it just never breaks. And that appears to be a fold-out. That's one piece. And then the manual. Just flipping through the manual. You can see headset, consoles, stuff. Four languages, English, French, Portuguese, and Spanish. So there we go. All right, so let's see what this is like. Since I don't read manuals anyway, it's a joke. All right, um, okay, so it's got this interesting packaging. It's actually something holding it down. I didn't expect that, so this is in the way. And I'm trying to figure out how to remove this. Okay, so it's got a tab. So this comes out here, and uh, it actually is holding it in place. Almost cut myself. Which is, again, interesting. Okay. Um, Oh, and it actually is taped, it's, it's kind of glued in as well. That is 
Very interesting. Okay, so you can see here, it's got some stuff underneath here, which is the the, the important stuff. So this appears to be the microphone. I'm gonna go out and let me say that it is. It sure, looks like one. Uh, microphone uh, spit guard, I guess they call it the pop filter. Pop filter. That's it. Thank you. Um, and just something to eat. And a braided USB cable. Actually, it looks really nice. Um, there's USB Type C to standard USB Type A, so that's really cool. Um, and we've got never had, honestly can never have too many of these. A uh, three band, three and a half millimeter, three and a half millimeter, so you can plug it into your consoles and your uh, headset. It's pretty great, and it's a nice braided one too, so it's nice and high quality. I mentioned an adapter. I didn't see it. Maybe it's in here in one of these baggies. I guess we'll find out in a second. But um, all right. So I noticed this has some plastic covering this. So I wonder if it's part of the. It's actually connected already. So it, oh oh okay. So it's got a little like a heat shrink tube. Is that is that coming? Does that come off or what? This is so weird. It just looks like it should come apart, but it's not. I may actually have to open that manual. <laughs> Something I never expected. But it's a very unique looking plug. I don't normally see it like that. That's so, that's so strange. All right, and then the USB, which also has a heat shrink tube covering the end of it. And also these fancy grips, which are really weird. It looks like they come apart, but they don't seem to. I don't see the USB-C or USB-C adapter they talked about. In there. Well, we'll see. All right. Pun intended. Um, I guess we'll open this cable up since this looks really nice. Also, yep, there it is. Also, again with these heat shrink tube covers. Yeah, this is a really, really fancy, really fancy. And this one is. Wait, does that have an extra band? It does. How interesting. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But one side has four bands and one side has three. Now, I think the reason they do that is because internally it's ba it's a balanced connection, but externally it's unbalanced. And you could probably wire this differently. I'm curious. I'll have to figure, actually take a meter to this and figure out where the split, uh, split is. But I'm guessing two of these are ground. That's weird that they would use a, well, really a non-standard connector. But maybe a standard won't work. But yeah, looking at it, it probably won't. I'll have to play with it. And, I'll have to play with it and see why this has an extra band. Because I, most headphones that are that have an additional microphone, just use this connector. They don't have this one, which has an extra band on it. This is unusual. And yet, I have seen these cables do exist, and these connectors do exist. They're just not common. So we'll have to play with that and see what that's all about. Be unfortunate if you had used this cable. That would be unfortunate. All right, um, okay, so let's just go ahead and take this out. All right, so this is interesting. All right, so we've got plastic covering this up here. I guess I'll have to take these off for you guys right here on live. Got a little peeling off the plastic. And of course it sucks to be aesthetic. <laughs> um, all right, we'll take off the other side too. Right. And there's a clear, and it's got the model number right there, 70BT. Uh, it's got a metal here, and and this is metal is here as well, but this is all plastic. Okay, it doesn't swivel very far. It's got a nice mesh here. I'm not sure if it's meant to be semi-open or what. I guess, I guess we'll find out. Um, it's got an interesting yellow accents here and a nice thick padding right here. Um, this is interesting, actually, how they did this. So we've got uh, oh, more stuff to peel off. Ready? Uh, there it comes. And I think there's one more piece. If I can get this off my finger. There we go. One more piece to peel off right here. There it is. Okay. So, oh, I get two more. Wow, there's so much to peel off in this thing. This thing's loaded with clear plastic protection. All right. 
All right, and so we've got what appears to be a Corsair button. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe it's a cat. Aha, it is a cat. This must be where the microphone goes then. I'm just going to go ahead and find out if that's the case. All right, so then we've got all, another piece to tear off. This thing has got so many clear pieces to take off. I've never seen so many. All right, so yeah, this is something that you could easily lose, which is a good downside to that, I suppose. Um, and it's got a little keyed notch here. So you can see that it's got a little key right there. So it only goes in one way, though it should actually matter. Um, I'll go ahead and take this top filter off so it looks all professional. All right, so you can put this on here. All right, so now let's get to the buttons. So we got the three and a half millimeter jack I was telling you about earlier, appears to be the gray end, the USB-C port, a mute button, which is a push in, push out, andante style button, then a volume wheel, which has a hard stop on both directions. And last but not least is a power button. Okay, so these are all appear to be leather cups. Um, an interesting thing about them is they have this unique little bump right here. I, I don't know what that's about. Um, I've never seen that before. It has a bump right there. As you can see. Uh, both sides have it. Um, these probably don't look like they're going to come off too easily. I guess we'll see. All right, and let's see. We've got a left label on the inside right here and a right label on this side. So I guess that means it goes on like this. All right. So initial impressions on the comfort. Um, well, it's not bad. It covers my ears entirely, which is easier said than done because I've got large satellites here. Um, it doesn't, it's not bad. It'll, it's time will tell if it bothers me after a while. Some headphones you just can't tell right away. It feels, excuse me, it feels like it's a little bit kind of hard in spots, but it's, it's not a, it's not bad. It, it, it could, it could work. All right, so let's see how they sound. I'm going to try the 3.5 millimeter jack so I don't have to mess around with whatever battery life happens to ship in the box. Now this is a really cool little guy here. I'm gonna rewire this so that it stays on. I always like it when, when, uh, when things come with built-in cable management. I think that's really cool. Um, will this fall off? It, it probably will, won't it? No. Such is life. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, all right. So here we go. So I'm going to plug this gray end into here, which I believe is correct. It's got a gray jack because the ends are not the same. And then I'll go ahead and uh, plug this into my phone, which does fit even with the case on, which is nice because it has a skinny tip there. So it doesn't get in the way of the phone case, which is great. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and listen to this and see how it sounds. And sure, I was going to probably insert something silly at this point of the video. That, uh, a little more bass line prefer, but not bad at all, and not overbearing. And uh, other things there. Like, you know, I'm just listening to the police here, and uh, it's definitely uh, more. You hear the, the bass line a lot heavier than you hear the voices, but it's it's not overbearing. I'll keep playing with it, and I do know that the USB mode is supposed to have a built-in equalizer. And the equalizer can solve lots of preference issues like that. So, so far so good. And, uh, well, I guess we will see how things come out in the full review. Thank you, take care, and God bless.